previous videos, we talked about frontier technology and the application in healthcare through what we call future health technologies. We also looked at the ethical di dilemma and opportunities that those technology offer. What we haven't looked at is how those technology can actually be used within compliance, legal, ethics, risk management, and audit functions within the biopharmaceutical industry. Those technology offer a huge opportunity to actually do things very differently in how we work. And that's what we're gonna look at today. The first thing I'd like to talk about is the potential of automation big data, analytics, and AI in the field of compliance uh, and risk management. As you can see on the graph here, uh, you know, we're looking and, you know, through this study uh, from the McKinsey Global Institute at the automatability of tasks. And so historically, you know, people were looking at it, okay, can I automate this whole job or this other job? It's not really like this, because each of the job contain a large number of different tasks. So what McKinsey has done very smartly is actually not looking at job, but more at activities and that identify that there are a, you know, a number of, of activity in a, in, a, in a classic job that can be identified. And you can see them here. For example, data processing activity, data collection activity, um, you know, unpredictable physical work, predictable physical work, stakeholder engagement, you know, management, uh, for example, uh, and, and applying different type of expertise. And based on that, they've actually identified, based on the current you know, um, uh, AI capabilities, what are the level of automation of those different tasks? And you can see on the right side, if you remember the Moravex paradox in one of our previous videos, uh, that you know, the data collection, processing, and then the predictable and physical work are the ones which are most likely to be automated. Very interesting. So it's actually on each end of the spectrum, on the blue color side and on the white color side. We can actually automate very much on those two uh, elements of the, of the continuum. Now, AI is starting to progress in areas like stakeholder engagement and interaction, unpredictable physical work, where you can see level of automation that can be all the way to a fifth or even a fourth of the activity. And we expect that over the next five to 10 years, they would actually, this segment will grow as far as 50, 60, and 70%, um, which indicate that a lot of the area that we currently think are not uh, automatable, uh, where AI doesn't have a full potential, um, is actually not going to, you know, is going to happen very quickly. So this spectrum is going to evolve as technology is evolving and we need to get ready. Remember the Asmara paradox we talked about before? You know, we, n we need to stop thinking linearly, we need to start thinking exponentially and start applying those technology, not only in how we advise in, within the biopharmaceutical industry and help unleash the power of those technology for patients, you know, especially in this gray area, but also utilize those technology to perform you know, better and more effective and efficient compliance programs. There are many ways and areas that we can do better. For example, leveraging robotic process automation. We can digitalize a large number of standard operating procedures. Uh, we can leverage virtual reality for immersive you know, code of conduct training. Uh, we can leverage analytics in order to better understand where the risk area are and even predict you know, where some risk may occur or identify pockets of, of risk and issue within the organization so we can allocate our limited resources where it really matters and where we can really make a difference to reduce the risk level. Those technology are you know, pervasive and we should start leveraging. So we won't expect you, and that's the next slide, uh, you know, to become over suddenly coders and, and, and engineers. But we have to evolve and become next generation ethics and compliance professionals. What that means is we need to be thinking exponentially and combinatorially, as per you know, some of our first videos. We need to think about lifelong education. It's over the time where we had a degree in you know, our JD or accounting degree or medical degree, and that's it, we're gonna leave and, and you know, a, a professional life and, and, and just learn. We need to get back to school on a regular basis. We need to educate ourselves on projects, on technology. Things are changing very rapidly around us and understanding those change is gonna be critical to our ability to find solutions which are ethical and compliance and unleash the potential of those technology. So we need to develop our technical literacy and technological literacy, understanding those frontier technology and health technology. We need to also uh, make sure that we understand that better the evolution of the healthcare ecosystem and how the broader ecosystem is evolving around us. So we understand those hard trends and how they're gonna shape the ecosystem over the next 10 to 20 years so we can be ahead of the curve, anticipate the risk and serve better our partners. It's also important for us as compliance and ethics professional to start really embracing the collective machine human intelligence I talked about. Um, that's gonna be a world where we'll have to really collaborate uh, with those machines and maximize their potential. 
Another area is also we'll have to shift from being enterprise compliance professional into what I call ecosystem compliance professional. Historically, the industry you know, has probably uh, within the boundary of each of the organization, within, within you know, our, uh, our biopharmaceutical industry, each company had pretty much everything embedded. Now with specialization, we're starting to outsource a number of tasks to a large number of, of entity. Think about you know, clinical research organization, clinical HR, clinical IT organization, contract manufacturing, contract sales organization, contract IT, etc. Cetera, et cetera. So a lot of the activity are being performed outside of the boundary of the organization. And we need to understand how this broader ecosystem is evolving. So we get outside of the boundary of the organization and understand where those risks are located uh, and not just looking inward. So that's a real evolution in terms of how we operate. We're going to start making partnerships. Uh, we're going to start really evolving drastically how the ecosystem is working. And that means that we get, need to get our boots on the ground outside of the organizations. So that will require our ability to be comfortable with the gray, with the ambiguity, uh, and also make const constant adjustments to our risk profile and topologies. Now, last uh, but not least is, you know, what does that mean for, you know, uh, as well, industry associations? which are, you know, essential pillar of how we operate locally in the different countries. Um, they, you know, they're used to having, you know, ethics and compliance bodies. Uh, you know, they're an essential arm, uh, you know, from a self-regulation perspective. Uh, we'll need to rely on them to actually help us foster new type of innovations and technology. Uh, start, you know, working with us in order to embrace those technology and how we can self-regulate them at a global industry IFPMA level. Uh, you know, so we'll, we're going to start working with those associations to make sure we shift from a break and fix system to a predict and prevent uh, you know, type of system where we're trying to bend the curve uh, on, on those disease and that will require to leverage those technology and approach differently the type of interactions we have. For example, patient centricity, partnership and new types of, 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 of operations. So innovation ethics, innovation compliance, innovation risk management will become a strategic and communication backbone for the industry, both for local association, regional, global association, but also for pharmaceutical industry. Patients, stakeholders, HCP, HCOs, global partners, NGO, expect from us that we actually are ahead of the curve and understand how we can do this. And association will play a critical role in this. Among other things, self-regulation is going to be one of them. Uh, but not only, it's also about working with authority and our partner to actually co-design regulation and design regulation which are not too strict so we can't innovate, we must innovate. So we can really co-design with the patient, the health authority and the industry together as well as the global you know, organization like WHO. This co-design is going to be the critical success. We can't design each of us in isolation anymore. We need to work together in order to actually find solutions which are ethical and compliant and help unleash the potential for patients. If you're interested in learning more about those technologies and their application, please check out my other videos on the topic. Thank you very much.